If you want to know how we got our baby to sleep through the night at just eight weeks old, keep watching. Hey, hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea and I am a new mom to an eight month old baby girl. We conceived her through IVF. And so I started this YouTube channel as a way to document our IVF journey. And now I continue to vlog about being a new mom and a working mom. If you are interested in that kind of content, being a new mom, working mom, IVF, infertility, any of that, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And I would love to have you join our little family here. All right. So I wanted to explain to you guys how we got our baby to sleep through the night. Um, we didn't really have to do any sleep training. Instead, we used the mom's on call method, which actually does incorporate sleep training into it. But because we started the method at two weeks old, when they suggest to start it, we didn't end up having to do any cry it out or, you know, sleep training techniques, if you want to call them techniques. So just a little background. When I was pregnant, I didn't read a lot of baby books. I just thought, you know, I'm going to let my motherly instincts just kick in when I have the baby and we'll go from there. I'll figure it out as I go. And you know, it'll be all good. People have been having kids and raising kids for years and years and years and everyone's fine. But then when I hit about 38 weeks pregnant, I started to get really anxious realizing that I didn't know anything about like the scheduling of a baby. Like when do you put them down for a nap? When do they eat? How much do they eat? How long should they eat? All that kind of stuff. So I began to get pretty anxious. Um, and so I started looking into schedules for newborns and for babies, just what I, I wanted someone to like map out a schedule for me and tell me exactly what to do. Now, our doctor gave us this really helpful book. It's like this thick. I don't have it with me right now, but it's called baby 411. And there's so much good information in there, but in that whole entire book, it's huge. I'm telling you, it's so big, but in that whole book, there was no schedule. It was very, you know, kind of just left it up to you, which I'm sure that's probably a totally normal and valid thing. But we, I just really wanted a schedule, like I said. So if you can't tell, I am very like type A organized, like I need routine. And that's what I was looking for. So during those couple of weeks before I had Ray, my daughter, I was following this blogger on Instagram. I will link her down below. Uh, she, her name is Loverly Gray. She's actually a fashion blogger, but she was talking all about the moms on call method. And so I started digging into that. I started um, following the moms on call group on Instagram. And she kept talking about these typical days. And she had mentioned that her daughter was sleeping through the night by 10 weeks because she followed moms on call. So I was like, Ooh, that seems neat. And also what are these typical days? So I looked into it. I dug a little deeper and I decided, Hey, I'll give it a try. So I ordered the book off of Amazon. The authors of this book are two moms themselves, but they were pediatric nurses and they were the on call pediatric nurses. So they dealt with a lot of like those middle of the night phone calls they would get about sick babies, you know, all those questions parents would have during those after office hours. So because the authors of this book and this method are moms themselves and pediatric nurses, I thought they probably know what they're talking about. So I'm going to put my trust in them. So I actually didn't end up getting the book in my hands until we got home from the hospital. So during those first couple weeks, I read the book whenever I could and, you know, digested all the information, studied the schedule. And I just started to think, you know what, maybe this is a little too rigid for me. Maybe, I can't stick to the schedule. I don't know if I should do this. I started questioning it. So I kind of put it aside and right about when Ray hit two weeks old, I thought, you know what? It can't hurt. I should just give it a go. Give the routine, the schedule a couple days and see if we like it. So in the moms on call book, they do suggest that you start at two weeks. You can start anytime really, but their method sort of starts right at two weeks to get a baby into a routine. Another thing I liked about this was that they suggest that you move baby to their own bedroom or nursery at two weeks old. And for us, her nursery is right next to our room. So that wasn't really an issue for me. I wasn't worried about that. And I was kind of wanting 
to put her in her own room, but I just was getting differing opinions about that. And so I wasn't sure if I should, but we have a monitor that's really great. And it was totally fine putting in her into her own room based on this method. So we did start this method right at two weeks, like they suggest. And within two days, it was noticeably better in our house as far as our sleep, our routine, all that stuff. Cause you know, those first two weeks are just survival mode after you have your baby and you're just trying to recover and bond and get to know your baby and learn how to breastfeed if you choose to breastfeed. And anyway, it's a lot. So that's why I think they say just wait, give it two weeks and then start with the routine. So one thing I was a little bit iffy on when we first started was they do suggest that you give them a bath every night. And I was like, that seems like overkill, but it's all about the routine, putting baby on that. Like they know what to expect. Oh, it's bath time. That means it's almost bedtime type thing. So we got used to that really quick. And now it's just part of the routine. It's not, I don't feel like it's overkill. It's just what we do. And now that we've been following the routine so well, Ray just knows when it's bath time, when it's bedtime, when it's time to eat, when it's time to nap, all that stuff, which I've always heard that babies thrive on a schedule. And I think it's so true. Now in the beginning, when we first started the routine, the schedule, whatever you want to call it, we were pretty strict with it for the first couple of weeks. And every time the schedule would change as far as, um, according to, you know, their age and whatever, then we would, uh, we would be pretty strict with it. But then you know, we have nights where we stay out later with her and she seems to do just fine. And I think that's because we have so much consistency within her routine as far as like the bath time, the bedtime routines, like those things are consistent. And so she just knows whether it's, you know, it's pretty much at the same time every night, but you know, if there's a night where we do it an hour later because of whatever event we have going on, then it's not that big of a deal because she just knows like, oh, I'm getting a bath now, so it's time to go to bed. So I do think there are babies that are just generally better sleepers than others. I'm a new mom, so I don't really know like all these specifics, but I do think that Ray is just naturally a pretty good sleeper. But had we not started this routine and this method with moms on call, I don't know if she would be sleeping through the night like she does now. Um, like I said, she was sleeping through the night at eight weeks old and I'm talking from 7 30 PM to 7 AM, which is what the schedule moms on call schedule, um, suggests. And at, I think she was one month old. She was sleeping from 9 PM to 5 AM. So that's basically sleeping through the night as well. But like I said, had I not had this schedule, this map to guide me, to you know, know when to put her down for her naps during the day, know when to feed her and put her down for bed at night, then I think she probably would have developed some bad habits and it would have been a lot trickier for us to have gotten her to sleep through the night right away. In mom's on call, while the baby is young, um, I'm talking like a month old, you they suggest doing soothing rounds. They're not, it's not cry it out. Um, you'd have to read the book to get more details about that, but basically you just, um, let them, you know, when they wake up and cry in the middle of the night, you let them cry for a minute to two minutes. You don't go running in there right, right away. You just let them kind of figure out, Oh, I woke up now. What do I do? You go in, you, you know, rub their belly, maybe give them a pacifier if they'll take one. And then you step back out. Um, and you do a couple soothing rounds before feeding them because sometimes they're not actually hungry. They just woke up, you know, babies just wake up and then they have to figure out, Oh, I woke up. Now I have to go back to sleep or what do I do now? But if you just rush in there and feed them, and this is why I think they don't like you have um, having them in the room with you, even though I understand why pediatricians say to keep them in the room with you, but you all get better sleep if they're not in the room with you sleeping because when she was in our room with us, like I didn't sleep at all for those two weeks and any little noise she made, I was like awake and like, Oh, I'll just feed her, you know? And I would have times where I felt like I was feeding her just hours on end. So you give them that time to realize, Oh, I woke up. 
and now I need to go back to sleep or am I hungry? You know, you get to give them that time to figure it out. And most babies I think can figure out how to self-soothe themselves earlier than we think. So Ray pretty much figured it out by the time she was a month old, how to self-soothe and that got her to sleep from nine to five. And I do want to mention that I worked all of this out through my pediatrician. I let him know we were doing the moms on call method and I, you know, talked to him about what we were doing. And my pediatrician told me, you know, if she's sleeping through the night and she's gaining weight, she's fine. And at this point we weren't doing any type of like sleep training or anything. In fact, we haven't done any type of sleep training, meaning we let them cry for a certain amount of time until they train themselves to self-soothe. She because of the soothing rounds that we did when she was so young, she was able to learn how to self-soothe so early on. And we would have never known how to do that without Moms on Call. So if you can't tell already, I have a very high regard for Moms on Call. The method has worked so well for us. So if you are about to have a baby or you're, you know, you've already had your baby and no matter what stage you're in, I think the Moms on Call method could really help. And there is a Facebook support group for Moms on Call that I can link down below. You do have to have read the book in order to get, like to gain access to the group. Um, I will also link, of course, the book down below just on Amazon and you guys can purchase it through there. So to just sum up everything that I've been blabbing about, I just wanna give you guys uh, pros and cons to Moms on Call and you can make the decision for yourself if you feel um, it would benefit you and your lifestyle. I like that Moms on Call gives you a detailed schedule. Like I said in the beginning, this was something I really wanted and they gave it to me. It was the first book that I saw a very detailed schedule. Um, I The only other book that I kind of looked at was Baby Wise. And if you're familiar with Baby Wise, it's like a super old book, I think. Um, and they follow the eat, play, sleep schedule. And that's what Moms on Call follows as well. So I do like that they have the detailed schedule. I think that's a definite pro. Another pro is that the schedule works with the natural rhythms of your baby. So when they are hungry and when they're ready for their morning nap and like it's all in a rhythm that really does match the natural rhythm of your baby. And with that, the Moms on Call method basically tells you exactly how to do everything within the schedule and routine. So like they show you exactly how to give a bath. They show you exactly how to put them down for a nap. And they also give you details about sound machines and all that kind of stuff. So it's super helpful. If you're a very type A personality like me, you'll appreciate that. Another pro is that it starts at two weeks old and I don't know about you guys, but within two weeks, I was so ready for a routine. I was so ready to get back to, you know, the flow of life. I mean, I was still recovering. I had a C-section, so I was definitely slow and, you know, not ready to like jump into regular life, but I wanted some sort of normalcy in my day-to-day -day other than just lounging around the house and nursing a baby. So I really liked that it started at two weeks old. And because this method and routine starts so early, I think it really does help to train them to self-soothe. And that's why so many moms on call babies end up sleeping through the night by the time they're a couple months old, like Ray did. So another pro for me, all of these are just my opinion of what I consider to be. I really appreciated that the moms on call method does not follow a feed on demand like style of feeding. That's just not my personality. And just doing that for two weeks, cause they do say in the first two weeks, just feed on demand, just survive, you know, and then we'll start the routine after two weeks. But for me, that is just so draining. And you know, it's just like, is she getting too much food or is she, you know, not getting enough? I don't know. I just didn't like the whole feed on demand vibe, um, especially because I was going back to work soon and I just, as a working mom, I needed to have a schedule so I knew when to pump when I was at work and all that jazz. So I like that they had a very consistent feeding routine and schedule and even down to like how long you should feed them and how much if you're doing a bottle, that was just so helpful. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about a couple cons. I just have two 
written down here um, that I feel could be cons to some people out there if you're wanting to try out this method. A con that I could see um, with this method is if your baby doesn't catch on to the self-soothing technique within the first you know, little while, then they do suggest doing cry it out method. One thing I do love about Moms on Call is they do everything according to truth, not fear. So they do all of this according to fact and truth and what you know scientific studies have proven. Um, and at three months old, if your baby's still not sleeping through the night, they have a whole method of how to get them to sleep through the night at that time. But I did not have to do that because Ray caught on to the self-soothing um, technique uh, within the first you know month or so. So I didn't have to do cry it out, which was so, so nice. But if your baby doesn't catch on to that, then they do recommend that you do pretty much shut the door, cry it out, they'll be fine based off of, you know, and they talk you through like why they will be fine and why it's okay and why it's actually a good thing to do um, to let your baby cry it out. Um, and I know some people are not going to agree with that and that's okay. And you don't have to do this method if that's, if you're not comfortable with that, but, um, they do, you know, base it off of fact, like I said. So if you're, you know, wanting to do that, but you're kind of like scared or fearful or, you know, afraid it's going to mess up your baby or whatever, they have facts and truth in there to help back up why this is actually going to really help you and your baby, especially. Um, to be a good sleeper and so then you can go into it feeling a little bit better about that <laughs> um, and then I know it they say it only takes like two three nights um, to get into that um, full mode of self-soothing so I'm just so glad I didn't have to do that but I think I mean I know a ton of people who don't have to do that because they start the method pretty early and they're able to get their babies to sleep through the night so early on without doing cry it out. So I really think this is such a good method, but that could be a con for you if you're like, oh, I re refuse to do cry it out method, you know. Um, I suggest that you guys follow Moms on Call on Instagram because they're so amazing. Um, they give a lot of really encouraging, they do a lot of really great encouraging posts. And I know now they have online resources that, um, like they have actual courses online to help build your confidence as a parent and understand the truth behind what they do. And so I would highly suggest checking out their website as well. This is my um, little nephew I'm babysitting, Rex, um, for my sister-in-law and cousins. They are out of town. So anyway, I'm not sure if you can hear Ray in the background right now. She just woke up from her nap. Um, so I need to go grab her in just a minute, but I wanted to let you guys know, I mean, this is one thing that's so cool. She woke up from her nap, but she's just chilling in there because she knows I'm going to come get her. She's just talking to herself. She's totally fine. And she's, she woke up just a little bit early, so I'm just going to let her hang out in there. She'll be fine. She just hangs out, talks to herself and I'll go get her in just one sec. One other con I did want to mention is that it is easy to get hung up on the nitty gritty of the schedule. Um, they talk about it being typical days. So not every day is going to be perfect. There are some days where it's just, you've got too much going on. You've got like party, a party you got to go to, or, you know, you can't base your whole life on the schedule and it just, that's just not realistic. So it's, but it is easy to get hung up on the fact that, oh my gosh, if I don't do this schedule perfectly, then, um, you know, she's not going to sleep through the night or I'm going to screw her up or whatever, you know, your baby will be all messed up because you, <laughs> you didn't stick to the schedule, but that's so not true. They just need some consistency and the routine, um, to stay, you know, in that groove. But I, I did get really hung up on certain little schedule things, the nitty gritty of it. And, um, like, Oh crap, mom's on call said to do this and I forgot or, and then I'd feel all like, stressed out about it. But I think you have to trust the instinct you have as a mom too. Like you have to just trust that, you know, you're doing what's best for your baby and you're, you know, it's not going to be perfect at all, but this just gives you such a great, like I said, guide or roadmap to figuring out what 
like the best groove and the best schedule and routine to get in with your baby so that they can play and be happy and grow and sleep and eat and do all the things that babies should do and just have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful life. And I just love that Moms on Call really has made it so that I enjoy being a mom better and I enjoy my time with Ray more and she's happier because she sleeps so well and I sleep so well. Um, I honestly like, this is why I love Moms on Call so much. Like I remember being really, really tired for the first two weeks, maybe a month. But since then, I don't really relate to parents that talk about being so, so tired all the time. Um, and I, I feel, feel for parents because, I mean, there definitely are days where it's not perfect and I am tired, but I just feel so bad for some parents who just don't have the resources or haven't come across, you know, something like well, mom's on call to help them be able to get their sleep and get into a routine that will help them all be happier in their home life. So anyway, I know I've blabbed a lot, but I just am so excited about like mom's on call has been one of the best things ever for us, obviously. And I know it's not for everyone. And these are obviously all my opinions. And I know not every baby is going to respond to mom's on call the same way. But overall, I think it's totally worth a shot and I really um, I'm glad I found it for us. And so that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. And I hope you'll be kind in the comments below because I know this can be really controversial as far as like sleep training and all that stuff goes. But every mom is trying to do their best. Every parent is trying to do their best, whatever is best for their baby. And I just wanted to share what we've done so that those of you who have questions, I get a lot of questions on my Instagram about what we've done. Um, so I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail here so that you guys can get a little bit more insight as to what we've done with Ray and how great it's been using the mom's on-call method. So anyway, that is it for today's video. Please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. If you have other questions, I'm happy to answer any questions down below as well in the comments. I'm actually going to go get Ray so you guys can see her for a minute. Can you say hi? I'm pretty sure if Ray could talk, she would say she really likes Mom's on Call too because she just thrives with that routine. Can you say hi? Can you look at the camera? Look okay, right there. Hi, Ray. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.